Welcome back to Scary Animal Attacks. Today's episode takes us to the lush tropical jungle around the town of Rosario del Yada. This remote village is located in the northwest corner of Bolivia and lies along the Rio Yada, which feeds into the Amazon. The surrounding area is rainforest with dense stands of myrtle, laurel, palm, acacia, Brazil nut, and rubber trees, but hosts over 2,500 tree species. This area showcases 54% of the primary forest in the world, meaning that much of it is old growth and near virgin land. The animals of this area are many as it is filled with tapirs, capybaras, jaguars, pumas, sloths, and monkeys. Macaws and toucans grace the canopy with their beauty. There are over 3,000 species of fish in the greater Amazon ecosystem, but today's episode addresses a particularly dangerous species of fish, an 18-year-old whom we will call Raul was fishing along the Rio Yata. He was very familiar with just about all the fish species on the river, including their habitats, food, and behavior. The rainforest blurred by, and he piloted to his favorite fishing location with a few of his fishing buddies. There was an astounding panel of fish he could bring home, and he was fully aware of the dangerous piranhas that schooled in pockets along the river length. Raoul knew of many a fisherman and river visitor who had been bitten by the piranhas here, or at least had lost fish they had caught. He knew they were a blur of teeth and blood whenever they decided to attack anything. The piranhas here are usually mostly harmless, but conditions can prevail in which they become dangerous to humans. During the dry season, the river level can drop substantially, creating isolated gatherings of schools of piranha. Their typical food of fruits... Nuts, crustaceans, and small animals may become unavailable or rare during this time. And as with most animals, once deprived of nourishment, they can become dangerous to any animal that ventures into their area. Piranhas have a mouth full of razor-sharp teeth. Their teeth are triangular and actually alternate and overlap each other. This means when they bite, they can sever a piece of flesh roughly the size of an olive and quickly swallow it. Their jaws can bite with a force of up to 72 pounds per square inch, which far outpaces their size. They are extremely protective of their eggs, and many attacks happen for no other reason than someone infringes upon their breeding grounds. They are brought to a frenzy by splashing, the presence of blood in the water, or other noises foreign to them. Given these traits, it is easy to understand how a school of 300 to 500 piranhas can strip the skeleton of a 180-pound man in under five minutes. Piranhas typically can be up to 12 inches in length and weigh less than 2 pounds, although reports exist of giants growing as large as 16 inches in length and 7 pounds in weight. It is a fortunate fact that these fish are this size, because if they were larger, then would be an even greater terror on the Amazon river systems. While fishing, Raoul had been drinking a bit. He had been going through a downturn mentally and wasn't sure of what he was doing with his life, and the alcohol he had consumed hadn't helped improve this feeling. His despondency led him to make a fateful decision on the day in question. As the fisherman approached a piranha breeding area, Raoul peered into the water. It was only a few feet deep, and he could easily swim there. He watched as the school of piranhas circled the area he knew they would violently defend. Without saying a word to his cohorts, he stood up and leaned over the side of the canoe they shared, splashing into the water right in the middle of the school. The water quickly roiled as his body was hidden from the view of the fishermen remaining in the canoe. The water quickly turned red with Raoul's blood as he came back to the top of the water. The piranhas bit randomly into his flesh but focused most on the areas that can fit in their mouths, like his fingers and toes. Without his fingers and toes, Raoul had a hard time swimming, which allowed more piranhas from the school to bite pieces of the rest of his body. The other fishermen quickly pulled him aboard the canoe after only a few seconds, but by then too much damage was done. It is essentially as if he had suffered a death by a thousand cuts, as most of the bites were not into large blood vessels, but where there are hundreds or even thousands of these bites into his flesh in only a few seconds, it is easy to understand how Raoul bled out as they tried to get him medical help. Local beaches were quickly deserted as reports of this attack were circulated to the public. Within a few months, a report of 15 swimmers being bitten by piranhas increased public wariness. With reports of swimmers and waders losing toes and other portions of their bodies being circulated by the media, guidelines were issued to prevent further incidents. 
Many of the swimmers who reported losing a toe to piranha bites indicated that they immediately left the water to prevent a frenzied attack from the rest of the school. Officials echoed this strategy to anyone who would hear it. Former U.S. President Teddy Roosevelt reported watching a cow enter waters containing piranha and watching as the cow's carcass was picked clean of flesh. The locals had isolated the fish using nets to ensure they were hungry, then demonstrated to the president just how savagely piranhas could devour even a large animal. He published his observations, which created a public fear of the fish. Today, piranhas occupy nearly every tributary in the great Amazon River basin. Scientists say that they have found fossil proof the bony fish have been there for approximately 9 million years and actually more diminutive and less powerful than their ancestors. Mega piranha, as the ancient ancestor of today's fish is called, weighed up to three times the size of its modern counterpart and had two rows of similar razor-sharp teeth. After reviewing the details surrounding this episode, I have a few questions for you. Do you think Raoul was attempting suicide by piranhas, or was there more to the story? Do you think the fish acted out of protection for their breeding ground? Do you think the conditions in the environment contributed to the attack? Do you think that this species has reached a pinnacle and will eventually grow back to its ancestor size and dominate the river system to a greater degree? I will be happy to read your comments, so post them in the comments section below and let's talk about it.